Alright, so I have here a copy of a game from Japan called Data Toko Saga. It was released uh, in March of two years ago or so in Japan, and it hasn't received an English release in the United States yet. But I did get a chance to play this game with uh, Matt Sanchez. He, uh, he was the uh, translator of Ryutama, and he's also working on Shinobi Gami, along with Andy Kikowski and everyone else in Kotodama Heavy Industries, who've brought quite a few, quite a few uh, lovely games from Japan to the United States. And so, as I was saying, I played this game with Matt Sanchez, and he more or less translated this game on the fly for us, and I just dutifully kept a... Uh, record of everything he was saying as far as rules went so I have a partially complete English manuscript of this game and I decided that since he was gonna be busy for a few months and we weren't able to continue playing so I couldn't continue my manuscript I was gonna get my own copy of this game and see if I could fill in the blanks there was a slight problem with that though I don't understand Japanese I can't really read Japanese so it's kind of become a personal goal of mine now at this moment to learn Japanese at least enough so I can fill in the blanks in my manuscript and have a working manuscript for the working manuscript for this game. And so this is also just sort of a glimpse of what uh, JRPG uh, tabletop RPG books look like in Japan. Start off with a little introductory manga right there. I don't know what they're saying, but then it goes into a full replay from Cradle to Grave, a session of what this game is like. And this game can be satisfyingly played from beginning to end in one complete session. And that's one thing that I really love about this game and just just Japanese games in general. Like they are they are fantastic if you're like playing at conventions or you just don't have time to really play like an ongoing campaign week after week after week. You can just Pick up, play it, and it'll have a satisfying it'll have a satisfying character uh, arcs and growth through the through just one session. And that's just one thing I really love about Japanese games in general. And this game is also very much like that. We've got our table of contents, and just in case you were curious what these stats for the player characters were, that we're using that uh, that uh, particular. What was it? That particular... I'm losing my train of thought here. <laughs> that particular replay at the start. You got the write-ups for all the different class, for all the different characters that were used. So that was something that really happened when this game was played. And that was also the initial, uh, the initial uh, game that I played when I played this with uh, Matt. He went, the, took us through that. So all these characters, so I know what, pretty much what happened there. It's not really much to talk about. I, I might talk about it later. And here is where it starts confusing because I don't know what all, all I don't know what these charts mean. I really wish I did, but I can definitely recognize what this is because this is your list of classes. When you make your character in this game, you pick two classes from this list, and they all each have their own ranking. Like uh, the next few pages on this book actually show you what the classes are. So let me just flip to that. Like you've got. Rank number one is Hero, two is Mao, uh, Evil Overlord. And then you've got Princess at rank three, Dragon at rank four. And the lower your rank is, the more important that class is. But you don't necessarily need to pick all high ranking or all low ranking classes. Uh, in fact, when I actually played this game, we had one of the players pick Hero, uh, the one rank one class, and the rank 12 class, which I'll get to you to get to that in a moment. And got warrior at number five, magic user at number six. Number seven, you got priest. Eight, you've got darkness or demon. And I don't really know what that's translated to. Number nine is mascot. This is when things. This is when the game just gets a little weird. Ten cl uh, class ten is monster. Class 11 is Mystery, and Class 12 is Zaka, which there's really no good English translation for this. Um, Matt described it as like fool, idiot, the, the putties from uh, from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, pretty much a worthless, pretty much being worthless. And so we had a character that was a worthless hero. He was the hero that no one asked for, no one deserved, and no one needed. And in subsequent sessions, he changed out his second. He he would every time we played every at the end of every session, he would change what his class was. So 
I think now at this point he is a mascot and a priest now, so he's completely changed what he was playing as. And right about there is where I stop knowing what any of this stuff is. Because, as I've said before, I can't read Japanese, so... I can only sort of guess at this moment. I'm gonna eventually have to just go head first and try to figure out what any of this means. I'm guessing this is a chart you can roll uh, 2d6s for. Um, I remember I was showing this to one of my friends. He was he was freaking out about this picture right here of this little girl because she's wearing like a Japanese school uh, sw a school uniform swimsuit. She's got a jellyfish with horns on her head. One of the horns is broken. She's got a, a broken staff, and there's an apple at the end of the staff that a snake is eating, and she's got ridiculously tall, like, I don't know what the word is for them, but like, Japanese, Gaita, I think, maybe. Ridiculously tall sandals. He was just cracking up when he saw this picture. So, once again, more, more presumably 2d6 tables. Just moving along. Another 2d6 table. Again, uh, like in the long term, I'm eventually going to have, I want to have like all of this translated, but right now I'm just trying to get enough, I'm trying to learn enough so that I can translate, uh, translate it and complete my manuscript that I've got of this. Um, I'm guessing this right here is a diagram for what the game flow is like, because when we played it, uh, it goes, the game go went in cycles. And the cycle was everyone started off uh, choosing what particular kind of scene they wanted, and the order went based off of what ranking of classes you had. So, um, our hero, our hero Zako, always went first because he was hero. And then there was me, who had a dragon and warrior. And the third player was um, magic user and mystery, which are which among which are some of the lower ranking class. Uh, so are some of the lower ranking classes. So he always went last. But you would choose whether you wanted to have a combat scene or a non-combat scene. Which the combat scenes were, you would be whittling away at the number of uh, number of minions and mooks that the that the boss of the scenario had, and that's what this right here is illustrating. Is seems to be illustrating, and if you had a non-combat scene, you would just be doing things that would weaken the final boss at the final battle. So everything, what well, everything that you do in this game, always uh, always was about a band of adventurers going forth and fighting a big evil creature right here. You see there's there and at the end of every combat scenario you would level up, gain more HP, gain new skills. So that's another thing about uh, character creation in this game. You choose two classes and each class has six skills right here associated with it. However, you only get to pick three of your skills from each class. So there's a there's actually a fair amount of customization you can do with this do with this game, and let's get more charts, more charts. I think these are charts. I don't know what these are actually. For all I know, those could actually be like plot ideas for a game. More monster write-ups, probably like boss monsters or the like, or maybe this is. I don't know. Don't get me lying. I don't know what any of this is. <laughs> This is going to be a very bumpy ride when I actually start translating this. So, yeah. Like, I can understand most of the uh, Hibigana. Like, uh, okay, I actually don't know that. That is uh, Nasai... Uh, hold on. Oh. Oyasu... Na Oyasu mi... Na Oyasu mi Nasai. What? Alright, either I'm misreading that or that's... Or that's a really... I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to look up, that's gonna be one of the first things I actually look up when I turn off this video recording. Um, there's our, there's our weird thing that my friend was freaking out about, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing this is a listing of different NPCs, cause there's a couple of, uh, there's a couple of skill listings, they don't have quite as much skills as player characters it looks like, but a lot of these look like the write-ups for skills. So. This is sort of the same sort of deal that you got with Ryutama. You just got like the names and stats for them, but you didn't really get any pictures. 
that's one of the faults, I suppose, of just having everything condensed into one book, unlike Dungeons and Dragons, where you have three books but for everything, but it's three books for everything. Uh, yeah. So, and I know what this right here, this right here is all the, uh, all the reminder charts that I love having in my games. Just, ex just charts explaining how everything goes, everything is supposed to go in the game. And then, fact, and you have your character sheet right here, which actually brings me to one of the things that I really love about this book in general, Index. That's that. So let's say you need a character sheet and you can't seem to find a PDF of one or you don't have access to a computer that can uh, hook up to a printer. So you could like just rip this page out or end up breaking the spine trying to get a new uh, character sheet. Or what you can do is you can just remove the dust cover. You got the front half of the character sheet right here. You got the back half of the character sheet right here. So you just lay it flat on your photocopier, boom. Lay it flat on the photocopier, boom, you got you got both sides of your character sheet right there. So that's something I really like about this, about this uh, book that, just because of the way that books are printed in the United States, like they don't use these dust covers right here, which, this is a really inventive use of the dust, of the dust cover. And this, this green thing right here, actually just an advertising slip right here. Uh, advertising a bunch of Roll and Roll RPG stuff, which Roll and Roll is the company that uh, published actually published Shadowrun over in Japan. In fact, that right there is the 20th anniversary edition of Shadowrun. So, anyway, just a quick look at the art on the dust cover. They even they even added like the publishing information right where the right where the little advertising slip was gonna go. Just a, just a lot of interesting, uh, just a lot of interesting things you can see, based on how things are done differently in Japan than they are in the United States. It's United States as far as just like even book publishing goes. Really, like, there's a lot of like they put a lot of different, a lot of text on uh, text intermingling with the graphics. Not so on the front half, but on the back half. Normally, you would just have like like for example, like Dungeons and Dragons, you would just have like a graphic here, words here negative space here that's what the back of the player's handbook looks like in in, uh, in Dungeons and Dragons but here you've got just there there is very little negative space on the back here so anyways yeah that's data toko saga uh, sort of a personal project of mine is I'm gonna be trying to complete an English manuscript for this game and when I do finish that I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna do, give this when I do finish translating that and getting my uh, English manuscript completed I'm going to give this game a much more proper review because, once again, there's just a lot that I don't know about this book, about this book right here. But I do know, I do know enough about the rules, but, I don't know, I just, I just want to have a complete English manuscript for when I do give this, uh, give this game the proper attention it deserves. So, with all that said, I am Aaron Dereshadel, and I will see you all next time.